welcome back to the Strategy Edge podcast. In episode six uh, of today, we are once again joined by brand interventionist, author, and creator of the total engagement model, Christopher Roberts, who will unravel the critical role of insights and the art of building employee accountability at a granular level in the dynamic landscape of customer experience and net promoter scope. In this episode, uh, we will navigate through the intricacies of fostering a culture of accountability within organizations and also explore the transformative power of granular in measurement of CX and NPS scores. Welcome, Chris, uh, to another episode of the Strategy Edge. Thank you, Keetana. Looking forward to our conversation again. Before we begin, I would like to congratulate you once again for your book, 10 Reasons Why CX NPS Programs Fail for Being Recommended Among the Top 10 CX Books Globally, uh, you know, as a must read. And uh, to those listening in, 10 Reasons Why CX NPS Programs Fail is a book that provides practical solutions to all CX and NPS problems and will help you improve your scores by going down to the grassroots level. Now, in the previous episode, Chris, we discussed in detail about the importance of drawing actionable insights from um, CX and Net Promoter Score surveys and, you know, the best practices about conducting relationship surveys versus uh, transactional surveys. While that was more at a brand level, um, in today's episode, I would like to talk to you more about the impact of these insights at a more granular level within an organization. So in what specific ways does uh, granular CX NPS data empower individuals and teams within an organization to take ownership of the customer experience that the brand wants to offer? I think there are two operative words here. One is transparency and one is uh, accountability and um, just delving into each one. The first thing is it's important to get results at a granular level. And what do we mean by that? It means to get results at a team level, at an individual level. You know, if you take a contact center team as an example, going down to the entire contact center and what their scores and insights are, then going down to a, a team level within a contact center. And then even if you can go down to an indi individual level, that's great. Now, the the reason for this is that once you have these scores uh, at a granular level, and if they are transparent, that really drives a bit of subtle peer pressure because yeah. it's literally like a case of, you know, this is my team score versus another team. This is my score versus someone else. So it creates a bit of subtle pressure to actually do better, right? The second part of the equation in this is if you make it available to everyone so that the CEO has a dashboard, senior managers have a dashboard that creates even more kind of subtle pressure in the sense all the scores are kind of visible. Everyone can see everything. Now, the second part of it is why granular and why does that drive accountability? Because if the score is at a brand level, what exactly do you say to staff? Because people go, oh, look, the score is at a brand level. I don't know exactly how my team is doing. I don't know how my team is contributing. So. If you cannot really manage it at that level, you can't really even have a conversation to staff to say, look, I want you to improve. And I, these are the areas I want you to improve in because the scores are just at a global level. So if you can't measure it at that granular level, in other words, you can't really manage it as well. And a lot of staff are actually looking for a way to contribute. So they go, here's the organizational strategy. I want to know what I am doing or what my team is doing to contribute to this overall goal. And there's great power in that because I think every human being has a need for contribution and staff are looking for a, for a line of sight, right? It's, it's like saying, how am I contributing and what can I do to improve? Right. I'll give you an example. Um, ages ago, when I used to work in banking, there was, um, an employee satisfaction survey done. And there was an overall score for marketing. The leader of the group made a big presentation in terms of how marketing should improve its performance, et cetera, et cetera. But because the scores were not at a functional team level, no team or no team manager knew exactly what they had to do to improve. And, and that's the power of having results at a, very, at, at, at a very granular level. Right. But once you actually have accountability, you know, there's two other things you need. One is you need a mindset 
that says transparency is okay, right? Just because the scores are transparent, that doesn't mean you should have a culture where you're making fun of people with low scores or you're criticizing them. It should be a mindset of every piece of feedback is learning and it's not failure. It's yeah. an opportunity to learn. And once you have granular accountability, the next thing is you need to give people the tools to actually improve their score. And those tools include having insights. So it's not just, here's my score, but what are my key drivers? If there was only one thing I could do to improve, what would that be? There's two things, what would that be? And so on and so forth. The tools and uh, in terms of insights and the tools in terms of ideation. So how do I come up with new ideas? But we'll talk about this in a bit more detail. Absolutely. So um, in your experience, given that you've been, um, you know, in this industry for like um, two decades and more, and you have experience, um, you know, across uh, 20 plus industries, knowledge of over, you know, 200 odd brands. Um, how do you think organizations can effectively leverage uh, transactional and relationship surveys to drive accountability, both strategically and operationally a relationship survey has more of a strategic focus because a relationship survey has in addition to nps questions it has um, you know questions around key touch points it has questions around how well you're delivering your value proposition it can even have questions around how your competitors go in a particular area versus you so you can do a bit of a gap analysis you can understand your CX signature and how you're performing against it. So the entire relationship survey by its very nature is strategic because there are brand elements in there, customer experience elements, touch point elements, and even competitor elements. So you can see where the gaps are. Right. So relationship surveys really drive what I would call strategic accountability. People like, um, you know, the marketing team needs to look at it and say, how are we positioned against our competitors from a branding perspective, from a positioning perspective? Supply chain, as an example, as a strategic advantage. How do we compare against our competitors in this space, especially in B2B, it becomes really important. So that is, again, a strategic conversation. It's like, we do this, our competitors do this, how can we improve? So the whole idea behind a relationship survey is to have a strategic kind of discussion around it, right? Now, transactional surveys, on the other hand, um, are more operational. So it's like an interaction with the call center, how effective was it, an interaction with the website, an interaction with a salesperson. So there, the, the accountability is more at an operational level. So the granular aspect of it comes down to when I go to the contact center and I make an inquiry about product A, how satisfied are people versus product B versus product C? And right. if there's an issue with product A, what are the issues? Is it knowledge? Is it responsiveness? Is it this? Is it that? So it's, it's annular and hopefully by team at least, if not individual. And then it's that operational or tactical kind of sense of accountability. While the relationship survey, it's more about oh, how do we position ourselves against competitors? So. The two surveys are quite different in that sense, and they should be used in that sense. So as an example, coming back to the relationship survey, your know, marketing might have accountability in terms of positioning um, in, in terms of competitors, as an example. But then the product team is looking at their products and saying, OK, how do our products compare against our competitors? So the whole discussion of accountability is quite different. A relationship survey, and it's more around functional kind of responsibility while the operational bit is more around um, that particular touch point or interaction and how it performs. Right. I do remember in, uh, you know, in episode five, you did talk quite extensively about uh, the difference between a relationship survey and a transactional survey and uh, when to leverage which type of survey and, uh, you know, how often you need to do it. So for those of you who are watching it, if you haven't watched episode five, we have that in two parts. Please go ahead and um, have a listen of them. Uh, there's a lot of information that is there about these two types of surveys. Um, so moving on, Chris, uh, talking more about the granular insights. So uh, can you share some insights into how organizations can navigate and 
analyze these uh, granular data that they have collected from their CX and NPS uh, surveys and identify specific areas of improvement at individual touch point levels. So let's look at an let's look at an example of a contact center, right? So in a contact center, as that particular touch point in an operational sense, there are quite a few factors that make up whether it's going to be a good call or not. One is, is the phone picked up quickly? The second is, how knowledgeable is the agent in terms of your inquiry and the products and so on and so forth? The third thing is, do they take time to understand your requirements? The fourth thing is, through the conversation, how do they make you feel? Do they make you feel valued? Do they make you feel cared for, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So multiple things make up whether a call is considered to be a great call or a not so great call, right? Now, when you actually have this information and you have the ratings, what we typically do is we use correlation to uh, you know, present the information in terms of a driver chart. And the driver chart simply looks at it in terms of saying, how are people rating you for a particular attribute? And then the second thing is they look at it in terms of saying, how correlated is this to your NPS score? You know, what impact is it having on your NPS score? So fundamentally then, from a, a focus perspective, it becomes pretty clear because if um, something has a high correlation to your NPS, so it's having a big impact on your NPS score, and the satisfaction score is less, then you know that is where you need to take action. Now, where does the granular aspect come into it? It comes into it because you can do the same analysis, or at least that's what we do for our clients, at an overall contact center level. So overall as a contact center, what should they do? And maybe overall the issue is around training, as an example. But then you can go down to a contact center team and say, okay, for team A, what is the key driver for them? Team B, what is the key driver for them? So team A might be really good with, with products A, B, and C, but team B might not be good with products A, B, and C. So it might be a case of training in terms of products. So a range of things, but you can get really granular and almost surgical in terms of saying, what does each team have to do? What does the overall contact center have to do? And that is how you effectively analyze um, the data to then make improvements. And right. it boils down to something very simple. If someone gives you feedback, in this case customers, and you take action against it, your score improves. Once your score improves, your customer loyalty improves, your growth improves. It's like a waterfall effect. Yeah. Right. So. Um, when it comes to developing improvement initiatives or addressing detractors, do you recommend um, something like a centralized uh, team approach or um, is it more effective to involve specific operational teams in such a situation? Yeah, so that's an interesting question. And I, I know organizations who do it both ways, but I do have a preference and I'll explain why. So as you know, with Net Promoter Score, it's best practice if someone is a detractor to actually call them back and you call them back for two reasons. One is to understand the issue in greater detail because regardless of you know how detailed your survey is, it's nothing like talking to the customer and understanding what went wrong. So that's one aspect. And the second thing is to actually neutralize that customer because they could spread negative word of mouth and really damage your brand. And it's an opportunity to stop negative word of mouth and potentially to also uh, make that customer, save that customer and make them more loyal. So that's why you make the call. Now, the question is, do you use um, that detractor call by conversation from a centralized unit or do you, do you make sure the operational teams themselves make the call? My view is the operational teams themselves should make the call or someone from there should make the call. There's one caveat to that. It should be someone in a supervisory function. So not someone who actually caused the issue with the client is the one making the call. So if it's someone at a supervisory level or a manager level making the call within the team, I think that's better. Why is that better? Because change happens when frontline staff have a conversation with customers directly in terms of what their concerns are. Right. That is when change happens. If someone sends you a report to say, oh, you know, the issues in your team are ABC, you need to fix it. It's not the same. 
So if someone from the operational team itself has a conversation with the client and they understand the issue in greater detail, that has great impact. Because you know what? Nobody out there is deliberately trying to deliver bad experiences, but sometimes things go wrong. You know, things go pear-shaped. Sometimes you want to do things a certain way, but the customer takes it another way. So having someone from within the team have that conversation and then replay it back to the team, I think is the best way to do it, right, in terms of driving engagement. But the main reason is when you take frontline staff and put them in front of raw feedback, that's when change really happens. Now, I know people who do it in a centralized function, and that's potentially efficient. But in my mind, there's a bit of a, a, a breakdown, almost like a divorce in terms of the feedback, where one person delivers the service and another person is fixing the issues. And, and that connection is maybe not as direct as it should be. So- uh, I'm I'm kind of going back to the same question, you know, in a little more detail. So can organizations strike a balance between, you know, the centralized initiatives and also empowering teams to address feedback and enhance customer experience? You know, considering that a lot of companies now do have, you know, offices in different locations, maybe geographically different places as well. Yeah, so fundamentally, I think, I think the solution is technology. So th- as, as an example... Well, the the way we do it, it's it's very simple. You you allocate who is going to be responsible for the call, and there's this view that there will be hundreds and thousands of calls, right? It's it's usually not that many, right? So um, when you look at it, even if your score is zero, um, that means around thirty odd percent of people are detractors. Um, it's still not a lot of calls that you need to make, right? And most people have higher scores than zero. Um, so that's point number one. So efficiency is not such a big issue. Um, but the smarts we use is we literally say, okay, for this particular transaction uh, in this region, send it to this person, right? So organizations can nominate who it goes to rather than just going to a pool of people. And And the other benefit of doing it this way is that it automatically goes through the right person with the right skill level is taking the call. And, and you can actually measure it. You know, it's important to actually measure this in the sense that you know, has the call been made, what was discussed, what was agreed on, blah, 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 blah. Right. So as we conclude this insightful journey into the world of granular insights and accountability, get ready for episode seven, where we delve into another very pivotal topic. Chris will guide us through the critical role that staff play in helping an organization grow and exploring how harnessing the potential of your team is key to growing a brand successfully. Don't miss out on this next episode where the spotlight shifts to the heartbeat of every organization, which is their staff. Stay tuned for more strategic wisdom on the Strategy Edge podcast. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Ketana. 